and okay is, is there a pointer Wait. Okay. But it doesn't move. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, good. All right. I'm good. All right. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here in person. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a, a paper that we just submitted to the archive uh, last week. It's about Higgs alignment and uh, CP violation in two Higgs doublet model. So everybody knows uh, that we've uh, come a long way since the discovery of Higgs in uh, 2002. This is a summary, a uh, 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 run to summary of uh, 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 the Higgs copy measurement from Atlas and CMS. And I don't plan to go into too much detail except just to show you the broad pattern is that, you know, uh, by and large, what we measured about the Higgs coupling uh, 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 is very consistent with what we expect from a standard model Higgs boson. Okay, that's true for both the Atlas and CMS. And searches for additional Higgs boson, you know, once you have seen one, you know, you ask why not two, why not three? So searches for additional Higgs bosons uh, have been done uh, 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 at the RC, and so far they come up empty. And uh, here again, just very quickly showing you some uh, uh, search for a new scalar came into Tau Tau uh, uh, from the Atlas uh, at the, uh, from Run Two, and, and, and you know we don't see anything uh, so far. Of course, this we all know this because otherwise, you know. They will be big news. And this is a, a different channel of searching for new scalar decay into WW or uh, decay into Z plus a new boson, which uh, subsequently decay into BB bond. So we do not see any new scalar boson. And everything we measure about the 125 GV Higgs is consistent with the expectation from Santa Marta. That's the bottom line message. OK? And if you think about it, and if you know something about quantum field theory, or more in particular, you know, this very well-known decoupling theorem, these two statements are actually uh, consistent with each other. That is, uh, you know, uh, we see a standard model like uh, 125 GV Higgs and the absence of new particles at the Wee scale, okay? And this, uh, from the perspective of uh, decoupling theorem, which is a statement that effects of heavy new particles on low energy observables must diminish as the heavy mass tends to infinity. Okay, so very intuitively, uh, this is just saying that if I raise the mass of new particles, then everything we observe at low energy should be consistent with cinema. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so of course, there, there, there is some caveat. Yeah. The, of course, there, there is some caveat, and in fact, uh, uh, that's the purpose of uh, the talk today to show you one caveat, but not precisely the one that you were talking about. Okay. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, the, intuitively this makes sense that you know, uh, if the new particles are have a very heavy mass scale, then we should observe a standard model like uh, Higgs boson. And generically, you know, the, the effect of the coupling for standard model goes like a V square over the mass scale of new physics square. So if you put in the mass scale of new physics to be the one TV and V is the 246 GV, and you get roughly 5% deviation, okay? Uh, and therefore, it, given a certain precision that you expect at low energy, you can use this to translate, roughly speaking, again, uh, the mass scale of new physics. So just to give you a, a, some benchmark number that uh, at, for order 15% accuracy in Higgs coupling to the WWZZ, uh, the mass scale of new physics is roughly 600 GeV as a benchmark. Okay. 
Uh, so the question uh, some of us have been asking uh, for a long time, for several years already, that is, if we continue to pursue the precision in the Higgs coupling me measurements, is there any value in direct searches for additional heavy Higgs boson? Okay, that's really the question. Suppose if today I can measure Higgs coupling down to say 1%, okay, I, I, I give you 50, okay, 15% accuracy, the mass scale roughly translate into uh, 600 GeV. Then if I can measure down to 1%, is there, is there any point in searching for a, a new Higgs boson below one TeV? That is a question that many of, some of us have been asking for uh, uh, several years. And the answer is a resounding yes, as argument for decoupling is not airtight, okay? And that's uh, 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 the main focus of what I wanna talk about for the rest of the talk. And in fact, there could be, I wanna convince you that there could be additional heavy hex bosons at the Wii scale while still having a standard model like 125 GV Higgs. And it goes by the name of alignment without decoupling. Alignment here refers to the fact that the 125 property of 125 GV Higgs aligns with the standard model Higgs. That's what the alignment means. Without decoupling meaning that you could have a 125 GV Higgs being standard model like without having to raise the mass scale of the additional Higgs boson, okay? So in fact, it was pointed out almost 20 years ago, uh, 2002, not, two, not 2012, 2002, okay? Uh, that in the two-week stop by model, there could be a standard model like Higgs without heavy non-standard model uh, scalars by uh, uh, Jack Downing and Howie Haber in this uh, uh, classic paper talking about precisely decoupling uh, in the decoupling limit in two-week stopping model. But in one of the sections, they talk about a standard model like Higgs boson without decoupling, okay? But at that time, they, they, just, they just mentioned it almost in passing without elaborating too much about it because I think the historic context is that because at that time, nobody expected to see a standard model like Higgs. People expect that you see a Higgs, but you know, it'll be very different from the standard model uh, expectation and we will see new physics right away. But that turned out not to be the case. All right. Uh, so the alignment without decoupling was uh, uh, rediscovered uh, uh, back in 2013 by two groups. One is by the, the Spanish group uh, uh, studying MSSM. The other is uh, uh, a Rutger, Rutger group uh, uh, doing a numerical scan of a general two-week stopping model. Okay. Uh, so just very uh, quickly, to, uh, uh, to let me say a few words. What, what exactly is alignment without decoupling? So this is the most general potential we can write down for a, a two-week stopping model. Okay. The first line here is our dimension two term. These are mass term. Okay. Uh, M11 squared. M22 squared and, and the mixing term M12 squared. And the second lines and the third lines are all dimension four quadric couplings. Uh, the, the, the convention is that there's a lambda one through lambda seven, okay? And this uh, is the most uh, general potential for a two-week stopping model. And if the two-week stopping model is CP conserving, meaning that like, uh, parameters in the Lagrangians are all real. So that means that there exists a, a choice of basis such that all parameters in these potentials are real. Meaning that all the, these are M12 uh, term, even though it is not emission conjugate, uh, but this M12 is real, lambda five, lambda six, lambda seven are all real. If uh, the two step model is CP conserving. Okay, and in these spaces where all the parameters are real, uh, the phi one and phi two in principle could, could both have V, V one and V two. Okay, and the only constraint is that the V one square plus V two square equals two forty six GeV square. That's the V we observe uh, 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 for the uh, uh, in the weak decay, and there is an angle beta defined as a ratio of V one over V two. This is the ten beta very common in two-week stopping model uh, uh, and uh, also in MSSM, which has uh, two-week stopping, okay? And the particle spectrum 
of the two exam double model contains eight real degrees of freedom, three Eastern ghost zones and five physical scalars. They include two charge Higgs, one CPR neutral Higgs, and two CP even neutral Higgs. And so I talk about the, the, the angle uh, beta defines the ratio of V1 over V2. And there is another angle alpha that is commonly defined as a mixing angle in the, in the CP even neutral sector. Okay, so that is the rotation alpha that takes you from the 510520 to the uh, uh, physical CP even uh, uh, scalar. And the two by two mass matrix in the CP even scalar can be diagonalized uh, leading to, to these two mass eigenvalues. A little h uh, is usually is a lighter uh, a CP even scalar and capital H is a heavier uh, uh, CP even scale. And to see how alignment without decoupling arises, uh, the only thing we have to remember is that the CP even scalar coupling to the W and ZZ bosons are dictated by the respective strength of the VEV. That is, the coupling of the H1 to VV is given by one half G squared times V1 squared. That is the VEV carried by, by one. And for phi two, the uh, coupling strength to V uh, WWZZ is given by one half G squared V two squared. Okay. And in fact, it is possible to rotate to a basis where all the VEVs is concentrated in one of the scalar. And I'm showing you explicitly how you rotate from phi one, phi two to H one, H two in such a way that uh, all the VEVs resides in H one and H two has no VEV. Okay, and these spaces where all the VEVs re resides in one of the uh, scalars, say H1, this is called the Higgs basis. And this is of particular importance for uh, alignment uh, without decoupling. All right. So if uh, the, the alignment uh, happens when parameters in the, in the Lagrangian are such that in the Higgs basis, the scalar mass matrix is diagonal, that is, this off diagonal entry M12 is almost zero. Okay, this implies uh, the mass eigenstate coincide with the Higgs basis. The mass eigenbasis coincide with the Higgs basis. And in this case, uh, the one of the, 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 the eigenstate carries the full standard model value. This implies this particular a uh, 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 mass eigenstate that carries the full standard model web would couple to WWZZ with standard model strength. Okay, this is uh, 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 what gives you a standard model like Higgs boson. Okay, so alignment de without decoupling occurs when Higgs basis coincides with the mass eigenbasis. It's, it's just uh, conceptually, that's a very, very simple uh, uh, statement. Okay. So uh, to show you more explicitly that uh, you know, the coupling strength of scalar to W and ZZ in the two double model is usually written as the uh, uh, coupling strength in the standard model times the sine of beta minus alpha. And I, I told you what beta and alpha uh, are. And the alignment, uh, 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 you get a standard model like Higgs when cosine of beta alpha is much less than one or sine of beta minus alpha is almost one, okay? And this condition is actually more general than the decoupling limit, which usually say that MA squared, which is, is the mass scale for the uh, mass of the uh, additional Higgs boson is much bigger than lambda, which is a typical quadric coupling times V squared. So uh, pictorially, the decoupling limit is a subset of alignment limit where you have a standard model like uh, 125 GV Higgs, okay? And people have been focusing on the coupling limit, limit in the past, but today we want to focus on the complementary region where you can have alignment limit without uh, having to raise, having to decouple the uh, uh, additional Higgs boson. And uh, one reminder is that, you know, uh, we don't have infinite precision uh, uh, on the uh, measurement. Therefore, experimental data point to an approximate alignment limit within say 10, 15% of the standard model expectation. That is, we do not have exact 
alignment limit from data. We only know that we, uh, 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 we have approximate alignment limit. Okay. So the behavior of the coupling in the uh, decoupling limit and in the alignment with that decoupling, uh, uh, they actually behave very differently. Here I'm just showing you a the the coupling of uh, uh, the the Higgs boson to the down type quark uh, in unit of standard model expectation, which is R. Okay, in the decoupling limit. What this is saying that as you raise the mass of the heavy uh, Higgs boson, you should get a coupling that is closer and closer to the standard model expectation. That means you, you know, the ratio R should get closer and closer to one as you go up the, uh, uh, the uh, raise the mass of the additional Higgs boson. But the coupling itself is mo for the most part independent of the 10 beta. Okay, so that's the the typical decoupling limit. But for alignment without decoupling limit, what we are seeing is that you can have a, a precisely standard model like a coupling that is one independent of the MA. And this occur at a particular 10 beta. And therefore, as you go away from the alignment uh, uh, limit, you see that the ratio start deviating more and more from R equal to one, which is the standard model expectation. So these two uh, 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 figures show you very dramatically the, the, the different behaviors of the couplings, uh, wh whether you choose to go through the uh, alignment without decoupling or whether you choose to go through the decoupling limit to arrive at the standard model like uh, uh, coupling, okay? And here, just very quickly show, showing you that, you know, alignment decoupling actually is pretty generic. In, MS, in MSSM, these are the, the regional primer space where you can get alignment without decoupling for a certain value of 10 beta, you know, and you see that uh, depending on the choice of parameter, you can have a t alignment without decoupling pretty, pretty much for any 10 beta you choose in uh, MSSM. Uh, whereas in the a generic two week doublet model, it turns out that alignment without decoupling occurs at the low of 10 beta at around 10 beta less than five. Okay. And these are some benchmarks, a uh, uh, very specific benchmark in the MSSM for the uh, coupling of the Higgs to the down type quark. And as I said, these are uh, fit into the general pattern of the couplings that I showed you earlier in the uh, alignment without decoupling, you have a standard model uh, uh, like coupling that is independent of MA in one case. But in the other case, in the decoupling case, you have a standard model like the coupling is independent of 10 beta if you go through the uh, uh, decoupling limit. Okay. How much time? Okay, good. Thank you. And the, the importance of, of understanding the difference between uh, alignment without decoupling and, and the usual decoupling limit is also because the search strategies for these additional Higgs bosons are very different. If you uh, take the alignment without decoupling, uh, these uh, heavy Higgs bosons uh, decay are very differently from what you typically expect from a, uh, a decoupling theorem. Uh, here, uh, for example, for the heavy CP even uh, Higgs boson, it turns out that it mostly at the low mass region, it mostly decay into WW, but when the two, uh, two uh, H threshold opens up, it mostly decay into two uh, uh, 125 GV Higgs. And when the TD bar threshold opens up, it mostly decay into TD bar final state. Okay, whereas for the CPR scalar, it mostly going to BB, and then again, when TD bar threshold opens up, it would decay into TD bar. And so the dominant decay channels are WW, ZZ, sorry, WW, HH, and TT. And these are very different from the most considered BB and Tau Tau final state. Okay. And the same decay pattern for the heavy Higgs boson hold uh, in generic two week doublet model. This is a, 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 again, a study from the a, 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 2013, and you see the same pattern that mostly that uh, the heavy Higgs uh, go to WWHH and TD. So these are the, the channels that we should focus 
uh, 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 when we search for the heavy Higgs bosons. All right. And here, you know, there, there's been a lot of attention for uh, in uh, searching for the dihigs final states. So in this case, we will see actually a resonance in the dihigs final states. Again, this, this is something that that people have been uh, uh, catching up in the last few years. All right. So now that so far, those are all uh, assuming CP conserving two Higgs doublet model. And as I said. Uh, our purpose is to study, you know, what happens if you now allow CP violation in the two Higgs doublet model, and then what is the interplay between Higgs alignment and CP violation? So coming back to this uh, uh, general Higgs uh, uh, doublet model potential, if you allow for CP violation, that means the parameters in the, in the potential now can be complex. Okay, and this happens when uh, these uh, uh, terms in the Lagrangian are not Hermitian. So in this case, M12 could be complex, lambda five, lambda six, lambda seven could be complex. So in principle, if you allow for CP violation, there could be four complex parameters in the potential of the two weeks stopping model, okay? And again, if we assume that uh, uh, that can preserve uh, 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 U1, E, and M, there's a two verb, V1 and V2, and here I'm showing you a V1 is real, V2 has a potential a complex base. Uh, again, that, that's a choice uh, 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 to be made. In principle, I could have also chosen my U1 phase convention such that this uh, uh, V2 is also real. And this, you don't have to read into uh, this, this just showing you this, the uh, minimization of the potential relates some of the parameter in the, the Lagrangian. And in, in the way I, I, I've written down the, uh, the potential, you see that the minimization of the potential, the condition looks pretty uh, complicated, okay. But this is not gonna be the case when I switch over to the Higgs basis. Uh, in that Higgs basis, the minimization of the potential will look very, very simple. And then recall the definition of Higgs basis. That is, uh, uh, I can only choose the basis such that all the verb resides in H1 and H2 receives no verb. Okay. And in, it turns out that the definition of Higgs basis is not unique in the sense that I can rotate H2 by an arbitrary phase. And that lead, still leads a defining relation of Higgs basis invariant because H2 has no uh, verb. So if I, you know, multiply H2 by an arbitrary U1 phase, I'm still in the same Higgs basis. So this tells us that two different Higgs bases related by a U1 phase rotation on the H2 are physically equivalent Higgs bases, okay? And in this sense, the Higgs basis is really a family of bases uh, labeled by the parameter eta, which is the phase multiplying the H2. And then but we can quote unquote gauge fix this residual U1 redundancy by uh, taking out, factor out this U1 phase explicitly in the potential. Uh, the, where, you know, the, in the potential where this U1 phase eta could show up is whenever, uh, uh, when you do a, a U1 rotation on H2, you know, that term is not invariant under this uh, eta uh, phase rotation. And so that's in the, uh, what, what is called the, the H1 dagger H2. So when you do a phase rotation on H2, this gives you an extra phase of E2D uh, I eta. And also in the so-called the Z5 term where you have H1 dagger H2 square, because there's two power of H2. So when you do a uh, phase rotation on H2, you get E2D two, two I eta. And the same thing for Z6 and Z7, okay? So we can factor out this explicit dependence on, on the phase choice in H2 into the parameters in the Lagrangian, okay? And so for Y3, there is a one power of eta, Z5 is two power of eta, and Z6 and Z7 has, each has one power of eta. Once you factor out these uh, explicitly, uh, explicit U1 phase uh, 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 choice, then different choices of parameter in this particular Lagrangian now truly represent physically distinct theories. So because we factor out 
this U1 redundancy. Okay. And now, the poten uh, again, the potentially complex parameters are Y3, which is a dimension two term, and Z5, Z6, Z7, these are quadric terms in the potential. And the minimization condition in the Higgs space it turned out to be very simple. And this has to do with the fact that only one of the, the Higgs uh, uh, ha has a web. So the minimization of uh, in the Higgs space is relates Y1 to Z1 and Y3 to Z6. Okay, this looks much, much simpler than, than uh, uh, the minimization condition that I wrote down earlier. And for the first condition, uh, even though I say that this relates Y1 with Z1, but you should really think of this as a defining relation for V squared, which is 246 GV squared. But once you use the first one to define the uh, uh, web in the Higgs basis, the second relation, okay, re becomes a, a constraint between Y3 and Z6. This implies I can use uh, the second relation to eliminate either Y3 in terms of Z6 or vice versa. So this tells us that uh, in the end, after imposing the minimization condition, we only have three complex parameters. We started with four, these Y3, Z5, Z6, Z7, but the minimization condition relates to uh, uh, two of the complex parameters. So in the end, I only have three uh, uh, complex parameters and they can be chosen as Z5, Z6, Z7. The curse, the mouse doesn't really work, but. So I think it's running a battery because it doesn't let me change. Try this, okay. But I cannot go to a different, okay. All right, so now after the minimization condition, there are three potentially complex parameters, Z5, Z6, Z7. Then the condition for CP conservation becomes uh, such that if there's a choice of eta, such that all three parameters are real, then CP is conserved, okay? So if you go back to the If you go back to the previous page, okay, I, I can do that. Let's see, does it? Okay, good. So uh, you see that the three potentially complex phase Z5 carries a phase dependent E to the two I, eta, Z6 carry E to the I eta, Z7 carries E to the I eta. So if there's a choice of eta such that all three parameters are real simultaneously, then that implies CP is conserved. And in order for, in order for, the, for that to happen, that means the phase of Z5 must be twice the phase of Z6 and twice the phase of Z7. So we can summarize the condition for CP conservation as, uh, the, as the following, like Z5 star times Z6 squared, the imaginary part is zero. This is just saying that the phase in Z5 is twice the phase of Z6. Similarly, the phase of Z5 is twice the phase of Z7 and the phase in Z6 is the same as the phase in Z7. So these three conditions are the, uh, uh, the condition that CP is conserved in, in whatever basis you write uh, about your potential, okay? Here, let me just make a quick comment about the importance of, of a Z2 symmetry. Uh, in terms of the most general Yukawa interaction in two stop model introduced tree level flavor change in neutral current this is well known and therefore it's severely constrained by data. And this tree level FCNC can be removed by imposing a Z2 symmetry such that phi two goes to phi, phi one goes to phi one and phi two goes to minus phi two, okay? If you impose this Z2 symmetry, it turns out that uh, the following term in the potential has to be zero. That is M12 squared, lambda six, lambda seven. These three terms violate this Z2 symmetry and has to be uh, 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 has to vanish. But it turns out that the, this is too stringent. Uh, for the purpose of removing the tree level FCNC, we only have to uh, impose the Z2 on the mod dimension four term, not the uh, dimension two, two term. And the, the jargon is that you know, Z2 can be broken softly by mass term. So in the end, we only have to set lambda six equal lambda seven equals zero, but M12 squared can be non-zero. 
And the Yukawa interaction has to respect the Z2 as well, okay? It turns out that there are two ways to write down your Yukawa interactions uh, in such a way that they respect the Z2 symmetry. These correspond to what, what is called the type one and type two. In the type one model, uh, only one of the two Higgs is coupled to both up and down type quark, okay? Whereas in the type two model, one Higgs coupled to the up type quark and the other Higgs coupled to the down type quark, okay? And in the literature, uh, that you usually see uh, uh, then the two Higgs doublet uh, model Lagrangian is commonly presented in a basis where this Z2 symmetry is manifest. And this is usually called the Z2 basis, okay? So let me define what I mean uh, by the complex uh, two Higgs doublet model. This is a general two Higgs doublet model with a softly broken Z2 symmetry. Defined in the basis where lambda six equal lambda six, lambda six equal lambda seven is zero. And the verbs in the phi one and phi two are both real and non-negative, okay? And then uh, 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 that means the, 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 the phase for V2 is also zero. This can be achieved by the, some rephasing of phi two. And then in the end, there are to total of nine parameters in the complex three double model. This is what people usually choose, okay? But this is done in the so-called Z2 basis. This is now what I'm going to do in the uh, Higgs basis. Because this is because in the Higgs basis, the softly broken Z2 is not manifest and appears as the following constraint on the parameter. This is actually a pretty uh, 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 not so uh, nice looking uh, uh, constraint, but, but trust me that this is the condition that imposes the Z2 symmetry in the Higgs, uh, general Higgs basis. All right. so. Alignment without decoupling in the two Higgs doublet model. What does it look like? Okay. So here I'm just going to define, show you some uh, how I define some of the field. The H1 has a, 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 is a one that gets a, the full vet. So the neutral component has a vet. And the CP even part of H1 is phi one zero and CP R part is G zero. This is actually the Eaton uh, goldstone. For H2, H2, H2 doesn't have any vet. So for the neutral component, the CP even part is called the F520. The CP out part is called the A0. So when you write down the, uh, 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 there are three physical uh, neutral scatter. And since now I allow CP a violation, all three CPs, um, uh, all three neutral scatter can mix. Okay, before there are two CP even, one CP out. And CP even cannot mix with CP out if CP is conserved. And since now I uh, allow CP violation, all three of them can mix and the mass matrix is three by three. So this is a three by three ma mass matrix. Once you diagonalize it, you get three mass eigenvalues, okay? And the rotation matrix that diagonalize the mass matrix is a three by three. And this is well known. We can write parameterize the rotation matrix by three order angles. Here in this particular way that we choose, we write it as R12, R13, and R23 bar. So these are rotation, the one, two basis, one, three basis, and two, three uh, basis. Uh, but this particular two, three basis, uh, as you can see, is actually just uh, rotate phi two, zero, and A0. So that corresponds to a, a phase rotation H2. Therefore, in this sense, this uh, theta two, three bar is not physical because it corresponds to a shift in this eta that labels the Higgs basis, which multiplies the H2 uh, that does not get a web, okay? So in the end, we're gonna absorb this theta two, three bar into the definition of eta and call that whole thing theta two, three, okay? And the one can diagonalize the mass matrix, the three by three matrix, mass matrix using just two angles, one, two, and one, three. Okay. So this is the, uh, the, the rotation matrix that could dialyze, diagonalize the mass matrix. And this is what it looks like. And the exact alignment limit is given by setting the one, two, and one, three entry in the mass matrix to be zero. And this is a condition that the, 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 the scalar that receives the full web is also the scalar uh, uh, that is the mass eigenstate, okay? And so when this occurs, 
there's a mass eigenstate which carries the full strength of a web and will be standard model map. And this is the explicit expression for the uh, a mass, three by three mass matrix in terms of the parameters in the Lagrangian. Here I have uh, uh, redefined Z5 Twiddle, Z6 Twiddle, Z7 Twiddle by absorbing this theta one, uh, two, three dependence into this uh, Z5 Twiddle into the definition of Z. And the alignment condition, as I say, is M1, two and M1, M1 three equals zero. That, uh, correspond to Z6 Twiddle, real part of Z6 Twiddle is zero, and imaginary part of Z6 Twiddle is zero. And our choice of uh, our order, you know, mass eigenstate is that H1, H2, H3, is such that H1 is the lightest one, H2 is the middle one, H3 is the heavier one, heaviest one, and H1 is the one that has the one quantified GV uh, mass. And so as I emphasize, the data only point to approximate alignment limit. So uh, we want to study small departure from the exact alignment limit. And this can be parameterized by writing the angle of theta two, three as pi over two plus epsilon, where epsilon is much less than one. And in this case, this uh, r trito rotation matrix looks, has this particular pattern. It has uh, uh, one minus epsilon square over two, zero minus epsilon, and so on and so forth. And these are the nine input parameters that we choose in the Higgs basis. These are the VEV, the three mass eigenvalues for the neutral guys, and one mass eigenvalue for the charge guy, plus two angles, one, two, one, three, Z3, and Z7 twin. And we're interested in the interplay between the Higgs alignment and uh, CP violation in complex two Higgs doublet model. And so here there are two important experimental observations uh, that I wanna emphasize. First is that, uh, as I already said, the 125 GV Higgs is standard model-like. Second is that we have to recall that the, the electric dipole moment, the measurement on the electric dipole moment places stringent constraint on CP violation. And this motivates considering the small departure from the exact alignment limit and small departure from the exact CP conserving limit. Okay. So here, uh, when we talk about the interplay between the CP conserving limit and the alignment in limit, I want to emphasize, or I want to talk about two uh, uh, interesting CP conserving limit. The first, uh, uh, the, recall that the CP conserving condition is, is such that the phase in Z5 is twice the phase in Z6, and also the twice the phase in Z7, and Z6 and Z7 have, have the same phase. And these conditions give rise to two CP conserving limit. The first one we call CPC1 corresponds to giving the imaginary part of Z5, Z6, Z7 are zero, okay? The second one is less intuitive, what we call the CPC2, this uh, uh, is uh, corresponds to the real part of Z6, Z7 are zero, but the imaginary part of Z5 is zero, okay? And in the CP, uh, recall that in the CP conserving limit, there are two CP even scalars and one CP R scalar, and only the two CP even scalar can mix. And when we allow small departure from the CP conserving limit, we expect that each mass eigenstate retains its dominant CP character with small mixtures with other scalars. That means that even though you know, I have three neutral uh, scalars, I should still be able to identify two approximately CP even guy and one approximately CP R guy, even though I allow CP violation. It's because I, I, I'm only allowed to have small uh, amount of CP violation, okay? And so it turns out that uh, what is the difference between the CPC one and CPC two? The difference is the following. It's very intuitive to understand. In CPC1, the standard model like Higgs, the 125 GV Higgs, it turns out, have, has a small mixture with the CPR component. Okay, that means the 125 GV has a small CPR component. In this case, the stringent constraint from the EDM implies an extremely tiny a CPR component in the 125 GV Higgs. In this case, the epsilon which controls the departure from alignment can be in the order of 10 to minus four. So that means the 125 GV Higgs looks extremely standard model-like, okay? 10 to the minus four, okay? In the other case, the CPC2, 
the standard model like Higgs has a small mixture with a CP even component, okay? In this case, the constraint on the CP uh, uh, violation is independent of the alignment limit. In this case, the uh, departure from alignment controlled by epsilon could be much larger than uh, uh, in CPC1. As I told you in CPC1, the departure from alignment can only be in the order 10 to minus four. Here I'm showing you a, a, a numerical scan. In this case, our uh, departure from alignment could be in the order of 0.1, which is uh, three times, uh, three orders magnitude bigger than in the CPC1 case. And as I said, this is because uh, the, the 125 GV Higgs in this case has a small CP event component. So the glider uh, phenol uh, of the CPC2 turns out are very interesting. And this, uh, I'm showing you about one particular benchmark scenario. Uh, with this choice of parameter, H3 is mostly, the heaviest guy is mostly CP up, while H2 and H1 are mostly CP even, and H1 is a 125 GV Higgs. Here, I'm just showing you that these constraints satisfy all the Higgs uh, uh, copy measurement at the LC as well as the heavy Higgs searches. And here, just showing you that uh, the alignment without decoupling occurs for uh, 10 beta close to one, okay? And in terms of the 10 beta uh, close one is where uh, there is almost no distinction between type one versus type two model. So, so even though we base our benchmark on the type two model, but because we choose the 10 beta, close to one, the same conclusion applies to our uh, type one. And the decay pattern of the heavy Higgs is turned out to be very interesting. So here is uh, uh, the, the decay branching fraction of the heaviest Higgs, which is mostly CPR as a function of ma mass. And this is the decay of H2, the second heaviest Higgs, which is mostly CP even. And the most interesting decay pattern is this black line where is you see that you can have H3 decays to H2 plus H1, whereas an H2 mostly decay into two 125 GeV Higgs. So in this case, you could have H3 decays to H2 plus H1, then which subsequently goes to three H1. Okay, this is what we call the Higgs to Higgs decay. And this is interesting because this is a CP violating decay. H3 going to H2 plus H1 is a CP violating decay, okay? In fact, uh, this, uh, uh, the existence of this uh, decay channel tells you right away you had CP violation without having to measure any CP even or CPR character of the both uh, of the scalar. And this can be seen explicitly uh, in the coupling of H1, H3, this is proportional to epsilon times V times the real part of V6 twiddle times this phase, okay? This is non-zero only when you have CP violation and only when you have departure from uh, the alignment. And this gives you a very pe peculiar three, uh, a triple Higgs boson final state, three H125 in the final, uh, uh, in the, in the final decay chain. And in it turns out that this, the final state with three 125 GeV Higgs has not been searched for at the LSC. Okay, for very good reason, because in the standard model, this can only come from an offshore Higgs, single Higgs production uh, going to three Higgses or offshore double Higgs production and each going to uh, 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 one of them going to the double Higgs. So it has never been searched for because it has a very, very small rate in the standard model. But it turns out in the, our model, this uh, 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 three, tri the triple Higgs, the CP violating triple Higgs final state has a very large rate. And we estimated that uh, at the high luminosity LAC with 3,000 inverse phantom bond, we could have roughly, uh, 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 we could have roughly uh, uh, 100,000 uh, 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 the triple Higgs final state. Uh, uh, so this uh, uh, the tells our experimental friend that now is a good time to start an experimental program on triple Higgs final state. So that's my last slide, just a quick conclusion. So I hope I convinced you that there is an interesting interplay between alignment limit and CP conservant limit in uh, two Higgs double model. In one case, the alignment limit is identical with the CP conserving limit. 
Well, in the other case, they are independent. And there is a smoking gun signal for CP violation at the RSC in the uh, two X double model without recourse to angular distributions by searching for CP violating triple Higgs boson. Okay, all right, uh, I'll stop right here. Uh, question. We have one online question. Maybe I start with this one first. So, any short question? Well, let me just read this. So, the question was Is it possible to have a lighter Higgs boson in the complex two HDM scenario, or is it just ruled out? So, sorry, where, can I see the question? Because uh, I think the well, question is if you do this. Uh, in the complex to HDM scenario, you can have a Higgs boson which is lighter than 125 GB. Ah, okay. So, right, right. So the question here, the question is here, I'm assuming the lightest Higgs boson, the lightest neutral Higgs boson is the 125 GB Higgs. And the question is, uh, can, can we have uh, uh, the additional Higgs boson be lighter than 125 GB? For example, can the 125 GB be the second heaviest a Higgs boson, or can it be the, the heaviest Higgs boson? I believe that that, that scenario is still open. And, and it's just we choose not, we, we didn't have an, uh, uh, time to study that particular scenario, but, but I believe that is still possible. Hi, yes. Uh, I'm just wondering if this uh, alignment, uh, it's, a, it's a nice word that, that people remember. But then, is there some symmetry which will force you to align right. the Higgs? Except right. that you want it to look like a, a standard right. Higgs. Right, right. Yeah, that, that, that is a very uh, interesting question and very important question. And people have uh, looked at whether there's a symmetry reason for this alignment li lim limit, right? Because otherwise, you know, uh, some people argue that you have to tune your parameter to go to this alignment limit. Uh, I think there, there, there's been some some paper by by people from a British group uh, 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 studying whether you know trying to impose some symmetry to go to alignment. Limit. Even I think Howie Haber and 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 uh, uh, Patrick Draper ha, 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 have a recent paper uh, precisely discussing uh, 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 in what ways you can have a symmetry. Uh, a reason so that uh, you can have more natural alignment limit. Right. But I didn't. I didn't have time to to talk talk about it. But are, are they able to, do it? Uh, to some extent, I think th this kind of thing is always you know, uh, uh, it's it, beauty is in the eyes of beholder. You know, I, I, I think you can do it, but but it needs a lot of work. So whether these extra ingredients look natural or or, or beautiful to you, that that's subject to. Yeah. Existence of right. Of right. But I think if you want to just want existence proof, I think yes, there, there is. Yeah. Maybe then a uh, related question. So, the alignment limit, is it phase disabled or is it not the align? Right. Line good. Scale, yes. Yes. Scale, yes. Scale. yes. That's another good question. So, the question is is the alignment limit uh, uh, stable under perturbation when you include high order correction in, in the two weeks up and model? Uh, the answer. It, 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 it's yes in the following sense. As I show you, usually alignment uh, limit happens at particular 10 beta, okay? So when you include the high order correction, that means that in your mass matrix, you in include some additional term in your uh, 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 mass mixing matrix. So in the end, you know, once when you include the high order correction, you have to re-diagonalize your mass matrix. So in the end, you still get alignment limit, but you, it might happen at a slightly different 10 beta. But you always get an alignment. In this sense, it's stable. Right. 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 So yeah. So that that's something we have not looked at. You know, that is, you know, well. Uh, that's another important question, you know. So, can you have a sort of first order phase transition? And, and, and that is, in the end, can it? Can we all make it work for baryogenesis? You know. So, 
that, that, that's an open question, X and the open question we have not studied. Yes. If I remember, if Susie is included, then the uh, like the LGE effect on ten beta should be very tiny. So in that case, ten beta is more stable. Uh, oh, what, what, yes, yes, in the sense that, uh, you know, if you recall, when I show you the, the MSSM alignment without decoupling, 10 beta could, could occur at the over a large range of parameter, whereas for the two weeks doubling model, generically, 10 beta only happen below, uh, uh, alignment without decoupling only occur at 10 beta below five, precisely because in SUSE it's very natural to have a large radiative correction, the stop correction to, to the quadric term is very large because we need to have large Higgs mass. So in this sense, yes, no, yeah. So it's built in, the large radiative correction is built in in, in MSSM because otherwise you, you will not get the correct Higgs mass. Can I add something, uh, uh, we think that uh, signal would be like Right, right. Right, so, so we have not done a, a detailed collider study, uh, uh, but, but I, I intuitively, I don't think they, depends on the final state you, you search for. Suppose you, if you look at uh, 4B plus two gamma or four gamma plus two B, I think the background should not be too large. Yeah. You know, the background, in any case, the background has to be smaller than Dihigg's searches background because you have additional Higgs. But, but we have not had the time to do a detailed uh, uh, collider study. Uh, but, but I think that's an important question. That's why I emphasize this is a good time to start an experimental program on, on searching for the CP violating triple Higgs final state. It, it just has not been done. Right. Uh, from this is the, the electron EDM. We turned out, we, we look at the, all the EDM, the electron EDM is the most stringent one. This is two loop. This is a bar Z, bar Z type diagram. Yes. So, uh, don't think any other question. Maybe it's a good chance to get a new chance to copy. Uh, and uh, so, let's thank you again, speaker, and all speakers. Yeah.